to let me know if we're recording. When that starts, and we're getting ready. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. We're so glad you've chosen to worship with us today. This is a sacred time as we gather in community to open our hearts to God. I invite you to light a candle, as our candles are lit here in our sanctuary to remind us of God's presence with us, and to set aside this as a time of worship for you. Our service will be in voice and text. Music will be on the media viewer, so be sure you have that turned on. There will be a link in nearby chat if you want to view the video in your own browser. I'm going to start the, our gathering music and run the rest of the announcements underneath.
Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a new liturgical year. Lighting candles on our Advent wreath is how we mark our progress through the season. On the first Advent Sunday, we light one candle. Each one of us comes to Advent and Christmas alone, weary or with worry, lonely, excited, confused, eager for old traditions or new experiences. We light the one candle of hope. Reminding ourselves, we embrace a season that is different for each one of us. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God be with us in the week to come. Ignite hope, the most personal emotion there is, on the wick of each one of our lives so we find others. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Doug. In the Revised Common Lectionary, Advent always begins with a word about wakefulness. Today's lectionary word about wakefulness comes from Paul's letter to the Church in Rome. Today also marks the beginning of our Advent sermon series inspired by the book This Here Flesh, Spirituality, Liberation, and the Stories That Make Us by Cole Arthur Riley. Cole is a writer, a poet, and currently serves as the spiritual teacher in residence at Cornell University. She is also the creator of Black Liturgies, a project of the Center for Dignity and Contemplation. Over the next four Sundays, I hope to weave some of Cole's rich writing with Advent scripture and other voices to illuminate and play with this time when we are reminded to prepare for the new thing God is birthing in us and in our world. So let us listen to the Spirit speaking through the words of Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Thank you, Doug. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Cole Arthur Riley begins the book with uh, of some of her own stories by retelling a story by someone else that was important for her. It's the story of Baby Suggs from T Toni Morrison's novel, Beloved. Baby Suggs, the matriarch, gathers all of her people in the clearing. Everyone is standing on the edges, waiting in the trees for her to begin to preach. And she says, let the children come. And they all scurry to the center, and she tells them, let your mothers hear you laugh. And they laugh. And she calls the men to come down and says, 
let your wives and children see you dance. And they do. And finally, she calls the women to the center and says, cry for the living and the dead. Just cry. And without covering their eyes, the women let loose. And they all get tangled up in each other. The men are crying, the women are dancing, and the children are laughing, until eventually they all collapse in the grass together to hear baby Suggs give a sermon. In this here place, we flesh. Flesh that weeps, laughs, flesh that dances on bare feet in grass. It starts. Morrison writes, she did not tell them to go and sin no more. She calls them to awaken to their stories. And then she leads them in this sacred cry of the body. Wake up. Pay attention to the stories within you, to the stories around you. Hear them. Feel them. Let them out. In dance and laughter and tears. In words that come from deep inside. Find God there. This is not, Cole writes, a spirituality of disembodied, solitary intellectual musing. It's a way of being together in the clearing with God. And we get there by descending into the stories that reside in our bodies. Cole talks about how black spirituality had to depend on paying attention to the interior life because the slave owner the oppressor has no power in those deep and secret places. We can all learn from this. After all, there are many kinds of oppression, and many of us, too many of us, feel its weight. Racism, sexism, ageism, ableism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, not to mention the boots of consumerism and white male patriarchy that sit on all our necks, even those of white males. In these days, it's tempting, oh so tempting, to check out, to disconnect, to numb ourselves with our pacifiers of choice, go to sleep. But there is another way, a contemplative way. Wake up, pay attention. It's not enough to just look, because as cognitive scientist Alexandra Horowitz tells us, right now, you are missing the vast majority of what is happening around you. You are missing the events unfolding in your body, in the distance, and right in front of you. By paying attention to my voice, you are ignoring an unthinkably large amount of information that continues to bombard all of your senses, like perhaps the hum of the refrigerator in the kitchen, or the feel of the chair as it supports your body, or the tension in your shoulders or jaw, or your cat stretching out next to you. We have to do this to avoid cognitive overload and to conserve our mental and emotional resources for what is important. Attention is an intentional, unapologetic discriminator, Horowitz tells us. It asks what is relevant right now and gears us up to notice only that. And we are evolutionarily predisposed to focus on the bad stuff, which was the stuff most likely to kill us. So we have to practice shifting our attention to other things. Things like signs that God is here, on the move, 
at work, in you, through you, around you. Wake up, pay attention, and you will see the signs will be revealed. And you will have hope. Hope that cannot be taken from you. This is how I hear the apocalyptic language of the early Advent scriptures, like the passage from Romans we heard today. Paul sounds like a kind of a first century mindfulness coach, calling us to wake up, pay attention. A call that comes right after Paul's exhortation to love one another, to love our neighbor. After all, attention is a form and expression of love. Paul wants us to pay attention to the present moment in which we are living, because the present is the only place where change can happen. It's the place change is, is occurring right now. To paraphrase Frank Herbert's Dune, without change, something sleeps inside us and rarely awakens. The sleeper must awaken. Not just to smell the coffee, but to awe and wonder at the sacred all around us. For Cole, most simply, Contemplative spirituality is a fidelity to beholding the divine in all things. In the field, on the walk home, sitting under the oak tree that hugs the house, a sacred attention. Cole's words echo those of fellow poet Mary Oliver, who gave us instructions for living life. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. Astonishment, awe, wonder. Awe, Cole writes, is an exercise in both a doing and a being. It's a spiritual muscle of our humanity. Awe is not a lens through which to see the world, but our sole path to seeing any other lens, she says, is a veil. But seeing the veils of the world peeled back is no small form of salvation. Wonder, she says, includes the capacity to be in awe of humanity, including your own. Every second that our organs and bones sustain us is a miracle. To be able to marvel at the face of our neighbor with the same awe we have for the mountaintop and the sunlight refracting. Well, this manner of vision is what will keep us from destroying each other. In sacred awe, we are part of the story. Practicing wonder is a powerful tool against despair. Paying attention, waking up to see the world through awe and wonder, to see the signs of the spirit, moments of grace, the everyday sacred. This is a tool of hope, the hope of Advent. And to be clear, we are not talking about big signs of God's presence in the world necessarily, like the angelic choir that appeared to the shepherds on Christmas Eve. Most often we're talking about things, moments that are almost, Cole says, illegibly spiritual. I love that, illegibly spiritual. So let me close with a story Cole tells to explain what she means by that term. Cole writes, when I was 22, I boarded an unreasonably small plane to Nome, Alaska, and went to volunteer with the annual Iditarod Trail Slog Sled Dog Race. The historic trail, much of which was once a trade route for Alaska Natives, was made famous <coughs> after mushers with teams of sled dogs raced a serum 
to a remote village in the pits of a diphtheria outbreak. Now, each year, dozens of teams compete in a dog sled race to commemorate the journey from Anchorage to Nome. I was working the lot overnight, scuttling around in the dark to keep my toes from turning to ice, when the winning musher and team of dogs came tearing through the finish line. When I tell people I helped bed down the winning dogs of the 2014 Iditarod, their eyes get a particular shine to them. It reads like quite the grand adventure for a black girl from Pittsburgh, and in its own way, it was. But this is the story from Nome that has settled into my skin. There I am, sitting on the porch of a rusting youth center with a friend, a local, and a, and a local Inupiaq girl, who can't have been older than 12. We ignore the brown snow slush coating the porch as we kick our legs over the sod and brace our chins on the cold of the metal railing that wraps the perimeter of the porch. The girl is in the middle, holding her phone up like an offering, and her cheeks are all but touching as we lean into the screen and watch one video again and again. It's a parody of Psy's 2012 hit, Gangnam Style, that recreates the entire song's music video using the game Minecraft, changing the iconic chorus to Minecraft style. To our right, the frozen expanse of the Bering Sea. Above us, powder leaks from the sky, and three very different humans squeal and pitch our voices two octaves too low as we sing out Minecraft style, like it's as important as Ave Maria. This I will not forget. Lips cracking, bellies burning, snow sliding down my pants as I rocked back in laughter. It was one of those rare occasions that I knew was becoming a part of me as I lived it. The moment wasn't just happiness, though that was a quality of it. It was a kind of pleasure that made me feel a part of something where beauty meets belonging. When I talk about Alaska, no one really cares about this moment. It's simple and childish. To me, it was a miracle. The northern lights are one thing, but when I die, tell them that I went to Nome, Alaska, only to find God in a Minecraft parody. It is wonderful to find God in the sacred stories of scripture, but if we really listen to our own stories and the stories of our neighbors, the stories told in words, yes, but also in laughter and dancing and tears. If we look at ourselves and the world around us with astonishment, wonder, and awe, we will find God there, and it will give us hope. Wake up. Pay attention. Amen. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. Hey, hey, oh. hey, 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 h
I want to begin our time of prayer today with a prayer practice taught by Ignatius of Loyola called the Examine. We've done this before. Ignatius was a strong believer of paying attention, particularly to the movement of the spirit within us. There are a number of ways to do the Examine prayer, but this is one simple way. So let's all take a deep breath and let it out slow. Let's do it again. As we open our hearts to God in prayer, you may want to close your eyes. So in your mind's eye, picture the events of your life today. Let it play out in your head as though it were a movie. 
as that's happening, look for, notice moments of grace, of joy, love, of connection, of pleasant surprise or wonder or astonishment, even in the smallest of things. For example, I remember the feel of the sun on my skin through the window as I lay on my bed, soft and warm. Notice each of these moments today, and by noticing, lift them to God in gratitude. We'll pause for a few moments now to let you do this. Now gently bring yourself back to this time, this place, this gathering of souls. I invite you, if the spirit moves you, to type one moment you noticed in nearby chat. And you can always go back to the meditation later.
to each of these prayers, we say Amen. And now if you have a prayer of joy or concern that you wish to lift to God and have supported by those gathered here, type it in nearby chat at this time. And as people share their prayers in text, please sh read them prayerfully and hold this space as sacred and safe to open our hearts to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. With Lily praying that their meds won't be an issue, Lily says, I think something isn't right. <sighs> Lily, it's hard when you know, you feel in yourself, in your body, that something just isn't right. And you ask God to surround the situation with prayer, to give your doctors wisdom, to figure out what just isn't right, and hoping that meds won't be the issue. Oh, God of healing and comfort, hear our prayer. Monica, pray I will have the strength to do something I have to do. So we ask for strength for Monica. We don't need to know what that thing is. God knows. And God will give you that strength, Monica. O oh God of grace, hear that prayer. We doubt for all we hold dear, Laura, Marie, Fenn, Johnny, Butterfly, V, and all struggling with health and struggling with being their true selves. Amen. Amen to that. And for all those on our prayer list, those friends who are not able to be with us today, we lift all of these in prayer. God of grace, hear that prayer. I would also like prayers for a family we have prayed for before. We've prayed in the past for the now 15-year-old daughter of that family, Janessa, and she needs prayers again as she continues to struggle with cancer in her young body. But the family is struggling in other ways too. The oldest son, Benjamin, lost his love this past week suddenly from a brain aneurysm at the age of 19. He was going to ask her to marry him on her birthday, January 1. But now she's gone. And he's, he's only 21 himself. So very hard to deal with. That family has also lost uh, the grandfather in, of the family and um, an uncle within the last few months. So they're struggling. So we ask God to surround that family with prayer to provide comfort and peace and healing in all the ways the family needs to be healed. O oh God of grace, hear our prayer. We joyous prayers for friend Juan and for his daughter dealing with cancer. Oh, God of healing, hear that prayer. Ask for wisdom also for the doctors treating the daughter and for comfort and strength for Juan. Lily prayers for the people involved in the shooting outside a church in Nashville on Saturday. Amen. Praying for justice. And yes, I'd like to expand that to all of those uh, who are affected by this run of gun violence we've had. Too many. Too many. Too many. O oh God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers, those voiced here today, those spoken only in the depths of our hearts, those for which we have no words. We lift them all to you, O Lord, with faith in your boundless love and grace. And we pray together the words Jesus, Jesus taught us, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our worship, our worship is over. Our ministry to the world is just beginning. The world is waiting for you to wake up and pay attention. Go in peace. Come again in hope. And amen.
with your best of all. I don't care about the guns you tote. Listen to me like you listen to Fahrenheit now and live. Ain't no time for the second guess. The words I speak. Wake up. The ones who sleep in the leadership's fix your mouth to teach. Gen C's teach the kids what's peace. They don't have to worry about the police. We make them risk so they don't have to see. Every artist here on this track. We'll make a change here for young cats. This is for everybody, white or black. You better go and vote and get up off your back. Just like a rose on, lift your head, get your voice up. 